Yes. I can't. I can't tell. Oh. 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 Unicorns. In 2011, they are everywhere. On cereal boxes, television shows, t-shirts, action figures, memes, posters, school supplies. The list of products is seemingly endless. Though this is not the first cultural phenomenon to go through this. Recently, it was pirates, zombies, vampires, wizards, and the like. Is unicorn culture already over? Or are unicorns the next big thing? Meet Mr. Unicorn. His full name is Lemonade Unicorn Steiny. His friends call him Uni, or Lemon for short, but most people know him as Unicorn. After we met him in the forest, wait, wait! I told him that I was trying to make an honest portrayal of what life is like for a unicorn. Since I was a child, I've loved unicorns, and as I grew older, my interest in cryptozoology didn't wane. After following an anonymous tip in the Unicorn Hunters online forum that led me to finding Unicorn, Hey, how's it going? I approached Lemon about letting me document his life. What are you doing? You, what, stop filming, come on! That's... Because of this, he agreed to let me follow him around for a couple weeks to help show an honest picture of what life is like to demystify things for the general public. Born and raised in Missouri, Unicorn is now a resident of Los Angeles, California. He's an attendant at a local movie theater, a job that he has held for the last three years. Okay, uh, can I have a cupcake? Yeah, yeah, what kind? Um, what kind candy? You made a very good choice. Cotton candy is my favorite. Mm, it's so good. Enjoy your show. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I mean, I think I really lucked out here. Uh, I definitely have some friends who have been let go from their jobs. I mean, the recession's just hard on everybody, but it's worked out pretty well, you know. I mean, here I am, you know, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, which is cool. Why do you think you were able to keep your job? Uh, well, I mean, I work hard, but, I mean, to be honest, it probably has a little bit to do with uh, this whole guy, but, uh, I mean, I don't know. Beyond the fact that he has a horn, Unicorn is a pretty normal individual, with one distinction that really sets him apart. He's the last known of his kind. He is the last unicorn. People have been searching for centuries for this creature, this fabled unicorn, but the only news story you're likely to see is about a misshapen anomaly with an accidental growth from its skull. But this animal, or creature as he prefers, is different. He is a long sought after, biblically referenced, honest to goodness real deal. Many people love Unicorn purely for the fact that he has a horn, but recently he has developed a new set of fans for being the central character in a new book called Unicorn Being a Jerk. Now, I can say without hesitation that Unicorn doesn't seem like a jerk. In fact, all the times that we've been with him, he seems kind, carefree, and optimistic. We were a bit perplexed, so we asked him, Unicorn, are you a jerk? Uh, well, no, I don't think so. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know anymore. Uh, uh, I try not to be. I mean, I, I go out of my way to be nice to people. I open the door for women. I recycle. I, so, I don't know anymore. I mean, I don't think so. So why does CW portray you as one? The billion dollar question. Uh, I think CW does it because he wants to. I mean, he calls it a characterization, but I don't know. It's hard to reconcile that idea. Um, but, uh, I mean, I've known CW for a long time. And I've worked with him for almost that whole period, but it's just, well, I don't know. I mean, it's changed things between us. I mean, I like him. It seemed like there was more to this. 
and we wanted to hear both sides. So we contacted C.W. Moss, author and illustrator of Unicorn Being a Jerk, and its prequel, Unicorn Having Fun. So let's just get into it. Um, give us a little bit of background information, you know, where you were born, where you grew up, and if you can tie that into how you met Unicorn. Well, uh, I was born and raised in this uh, beautiful small city in southwest Missouri called Joplin. It's uh, part of an area known as the Ozarks. It's one of those towns that's small enough to where, you know, everybody kind of knows everybody. And um, I definitely knew of Unicorn before I knew Unicorn. Uh, I didn't meet him until high school. Do you remember this particular instance? <laughs> yeah, uh, we were at this party. We had a mutual friend named Joey. And, um, and one night, Unicorn was just kind of getting picked on by these like meathead jocks, I guess is the simplest way to say it. And uh, I don't know. I mean, everybody was watching it, but nobody was sticking up for Unicorn. So, I mean, I, I just did what any, like, you know, what I think decent person would do. I just stood up for him. And uh, I mean, ever since then, he and I have been awesome friends. He was just so grateful. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess I've always kind of felt misunderstood. Yes, I'm, I'm just thankful things have been as normal as they've been. I mean, everybody's basis of unicorns or what their life is like is always based on these movies or television shows or whatever that they've seen. So I don't really blame them for having these, you know, like misconceptions about, you know, what my life is like on the day to day. But to be honest, I mean, I'm really thankful that things have been as normal as they've been. It definitely could have been a lot worse, I know that. Hey, can we take a picture with you, man? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Whenever we shot in public, people constantly asked to take photographs of the unicorn. He seemed to take it in stride, this incidental fame. So is that, is that pretty normal? What, what's that? I don't know, people waving and asking to take photos with you? Uh, uh yeah, kinda. I mean, it just comes with the territory. But, uh, my, I don't think my parents really knew how to take it either, to be honest. Uh, they, I mean, there's not really a book on, you know, raising a unicorn. But, uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. It's just like there's, uh, you, you, when you expect a, a child to be born and then out pops this, you know, unicorn. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think it kind of catches you off guard but a little bit. Are, are your parents humans? Wait, did we not talk about this? No, you, you never mentioned that. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, no, my parents are... Uh, 100% human. Just one of those things where, you know, you, you pop out this thing that doctors call deformed and I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't know how to deal with it either, but they, you know, they did, a, I think they did a good job. Uh, the doctors and vets were, oh, I mean, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if I'd exactly say the same for them. I mean, they just kind of, I don't know, sometimes you just feel like a piece of meat, you know? What's that thing? What's what? The can says a uh, unicorn meat. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just a gag gift that one of my friends got me. Has a uh, unicorn seen it? <laughs> uh, yeah, unicorn has seen it. Uh, but he's not really very fond of it. How did he react? Well, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think he he takes it a bit too seriously. I mean, uh, you know, it's like I'm not trying to kill him. I don't know why he's exactly holding it against me. But, I don't know. Unicorn is unicorn. I feel like things just got taken really far out of context. I mean, I... 
Prior to this book, people thought I was this beautiful mythical creature who brought rainbows and happiness to everyone. But after it was released, everybody thought I was some crazy a who spits at pregnant women and doesn't curb himself after pooping in people's yards. I mean, I volunteer at soup kitchens. It's like, <laughs> in the book, Unicorn Being a Jerk, there's this drawing that, like, of me putting a kitten in the microwave. I put him in and I was like, oh, kitten's in the microwave. Push the button, pull the kitten out. I'm basically a hero. <sighs> As we continue to talk to Unicorn, it dawned on me that his whole life had been marred by misconception and this constant need to debunk myths. And that didn't seem right, so I thought I'd give him this chance to clear a few things up. Rainbows. Uh, okay, I like rainbows just as much as the next person, but just because I was born with one on top of my head doesn't mean I have anything to do with their creation. Sorry. The ability to attract virgins. No, but I wish this one was true. Gay culture. Okay, I need to come out and say that I fully support living an open and honest lifestyle, but the LGBT crowd touches my horn more than anyone on earth. That's not okay. That is rape. What is wrong with you? Recognition in the Bible. Oh, to be honest, I feel like unicorns don't get enough credit in that book. But, I mean, well... The Pope won't write me back, and the lady at the post office is a bitch, and she will not take my letters addressed to heaven. I mean, they take them for Santa Claus. What's the difference? Isn't that double jeopardy or something? Unicorn meat. All right. People in the Midwest, would you please Stop hunting me. What is wrong with you? I know they sell licenses. I know I'm fair game, but what is... Come on. Have you seen the thing, the like, faux unicorn meat tin that CW has? Um, you might have come across it. I'm not entirely sure. Why? It's just offensive, man. I know he thinks it's a joke. But people try to kill me. It was obvious that Unicorn and CW still had some unresolved issues. But there are a few inconsistencies. It's absolutely the best. The worst. And I thought things might be clarified if we could just bring them together. So we're here now with author and illustrator C.W. Moss of the book Unicorn Being a Jerk and its main protagonist, or antagonist in this case, Lemonade Unicorn Steiny. How's it going, you guys? Hey, Andrew. How's it going? Good, good. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, good to be here. So tell me, how long has it been since you guys saw each other? Uh, do you want to? No, you go ahead. Uh, well, I mean, it's been a while. Uh, how have you been, Uni? Good. Good. How, how's the fam? Family's, family's good. Cool. Um, how about yours? Uh, no complaints. Uh, I mean, everybody's in one piece, which is good news. Uh, my mom's gonna be really happy to hear you're doing all right, though. She was just asking about you. Uh, so, uh, I'd say, I mean, the last time we saw each other was about fall of last year. Why has it been so long? Uh, well, I mean, we had some differences of opinion. On what? <laughs> the book title, for one. Yeah, the title of the book, Unicorn Being a Jerk. Let's talk about that. How did that happen? Okay, I mean, so we had been working on it for a long time friends together, just hanging out, coming up with ideas. And I don't know, I mean, by the, the time it came to it, we, we really thought we had this really, really great overriding theme. Yeah, Unicorn Being a Badass. The title of the book is Unicorn Being a Jerk. Badass. Jerk. Badass. Jerk. Badass. Okay, guys, relax. 
we're just talking. This is what we're here for, is to clarify these things up. Okay, fine. Unicorn. You wanted the book to be called Unicorn Being a Badass. Because that's what it was. I'm awesome. It's unquestionable. I was being a badass. Unquestionable. It says here, Unicorn's still giving blood even though he has AIDS. That was obviously not my idea. I don't have AIDS. Don't pin this on me. What? Are you kidding me? You're the one who used to always say you were the mastermind behind all this. Why would I want someone to think I have AIDS? Is this true? Did you make that stuff up? Initially, we wanted Unicorn to be this bravado-filled, really over-the-top guy, but then we just hit a wall. Uh, I don't know, we ran out of ideas. Yeah, and then he just decides to change the book. Lemon? The whole thing. Take it easy, we're just talking here. Go ahead and tell us your side, what happened. I, I wish I could tell you how frustrated I was. I came over one weekend, and everything was different. All of the boards, all these new ideas, it was like the project that we had worked on for two years was gone. Okay, it was that's, something else. That's a bit much. Uh, the book changed, yes, but I fixed the book. You didn't fix anything. Are you kidding me? It wasn't broken. The book is funnier now. Funnier? Do you have any... It's like ruined my life. Everybody thinks I'm some face <laughs> because of you and your stupid book. All right. Oh, no. You kidding me? Yeah, okay. Andrew, I will, uh, I will see you tomorrow. Of me. Don't cool. touch me, come on. As you can see, that was the end of the meeting. We talked to each of them and asked if we could do one last interview with them separately. They agreed and we told CW that we would meet him the following day. Hey, he's not even answering. Okay. Maybe he's in the bathroom or something? It's okay. CW! CW! Oh. Do you know where he is? No, I know you guys kind of got into it yesterday. While I was on the phone with Unicorn, a voicemail came through from an unknown number. It was CW and he was out in the desert. So we drove. And drove. And then. What is that? Andrew. That's him. That him? Yeah. Shit. What happened to you? CW. How'd you end up out here? It was clear he didn't want to talk about anything. CW just sat there and stared out the window. So we figured we'd just take him home.
How are you feeling? Pretty good. Pretty decent, yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, I think we're gonna start soon if that's all right. Yeah. You think we can mic him? Is that cool? Oh, oh, hold on one sec. I got something. Hold on. Wait. Wait a moment. All right. What's that all about? Shh. What? Hey, Lemon? Hold on one sec. Yeah, George just got a phone call. It's uh, actually an emergency. Can we break? Can we break yeah. yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Andrew Rivera, it's, it's your so birthday. What's going on? What are you talking about? Happy birthday, it's Andrew. It's my birthday. Who is this? Wait, what are you talking about? It's. It's your mom. It's no. Andrea Rivera. I've never met this person in my life. I looked her up in the phone book. She's your mom. Happy yeah. birthday. Happy surprise birthday. Yeah, Uni, we have to go. Uh, George, yeah. his mom. Yeah, we just got a phone call. And uh, she's really sick. And we actually have to get going. No, come on. Yeah, well, we, we just can't. Everybody I mean, for not, things. you know. I mean, we wish we could. You guys can sit down for a moment. Just no, have a um, slice. You get everything? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, no, sorry. Uh, let, let's reschedule for, for this. That that, that's okay, all right? No, we'll, hold we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> Wait, when am I going to see you guys again? Uh, um, we don't know yet. We're going to check our schedules. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, tomorrow's good for me. I'm free all day tomorrow. How about tomorrow? Um, well, we don't really know. What's happening with George's mom? Come on. Well, George's mom, she's gonna be fine. Just let, let's have some cake. Come on. Wait, what about the day after tomorrow then? Um, well, we're, we're not even really sure how long we're Come on, what about the day after that? Let's bring the rest of the week. We'll, we'll have to check our schedule. No, stuff. come on! On top of, uh, you know, George's mom's incident. I mean, that, that's kind of hopefully, gonna be hopefully right. the fine. situation. Have some cake. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk later, alright? Later. Was that?